So in this video, I wanna show you how you can automatically start the ChatGPT SMS booking bot within Go High Level without having to go to the contact and manually start the bot by clicking on you know this workflow. So this is super simple. I've covered it in other videos. However, it's probably gotten buried since some of those videos are longer. In fact, most of my videos are longer because I like to be thorough and make sure that every potential question is answered. So with that being said, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what Go High Level is, you don't know what ChatGPT is or what I'm even talking about, very simply, we are using ChatGPT to respond to customers. And Go High Level is the software and the platform that we use to basically manage these conversations with customers. So you can see here, this is kind of some test stuff here that I was doing for other videos. And so Go High Level is what you're seeing on the screen. And what I've been able to do as well as a ton of other people is use ChatGPT, which is artificial general intelligence to basically respond to these customers immediately. And so what Marzo wants to know is how do we automatically start the ChatGPT SMS system without having to manually do it? Because if you have to manually do it for every lead, then it potentially defeats the purpose, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our workflow, right? And if you built this off of what I teach, on the channel, then you know, you'll have all this set up or if you purchased it, then you'll have this as well. So this is very, very simple and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. So in you know, Marzo's case, he wants to know how to you know, link a Facebook lead form basically to the start bot workflow. So it's super simple with the way that I built it. We're just gonna go into workflow number five and then out of the box, you're not gonna see any sort of triggers. And the reason that I you know, don't build any triggers when I give it to people is because if they start having people fill out, you know, forms on their website or surveys or whatever, and this bot automatically just starts, they may not quite know how to, you know, make an adjustment. So I'd rather keep it minimal. And then, you know, as I get questions, I can show people how to do what they need. So this is very simple. It's literally as simple as adding a new workflow trigger and clicking Facebook lead form submitted and saving the trigger. And that's it. And you may potentially want to make sure that the workflow can run multiple times um, if people potentially fill out the form multiple times like the same contact. But that's just something that you can, you know, adjust here. And so how does this now work? So somebody fills out a Facebook lead form, which first things first has to be done by linking the Facebook page right into the actual um, sub account here. So you go to your sub account, you go to your integrations, you link your actual Facebook business page to the sub account and then from here you have to actually map these facebook form fields so you're going to see all these different fields here um, or forms here that were created by this demo page and so what i would do is basically map like these fields here and then full name is full name phone is phone email is email and then this is how if you run facebook lead forms for uh, seller leads you have to ask the question like this um, facebook is sensitive when you ask for address so this is basically mapping the, the corresponding form to this sub account via Facebook forms. And so now with the trigger that I've created, right, when somebody fills out a Facebook lead form, they will be added to this start bot workflow. And if we go down the line of what this workflow does, it's just going to get the lead, right, qualified to go through the master workflow, which is over here. So this is how the thing actually works. A customer replies, we send a webhook, right? This webhook is caught. We send that response to ChatGPT. ChatGPT produces a response based on the prompt. And then we update a contact field and go high level for that sub account. When that contact field gets updated, we push out the message via SMS. That's how this thing works. So what's gonna happen is when you, you know, add in the trigger, this is ready to go. And we can even test this by doing Facebook lead ad um, debugger and there's basically a testing tool so if we go over here to this tool so we can choose our pages our Facebook pages that are linked to our Facebook account and then as long as you choose the correct form right which is uh, basically the form that we selected over here so if we go to uh, Facebook form fields mapping um, I mean there's not really an easier way to do this in this case other than naming it clearly so you know we just want to make sure the form that we're gonna test um, ends in, um, let's see if it'll show right there. So it's probably this one. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, so this is the correct form. And the, the way that I know that is because of the name of the form here. And technically the workflow will trigger for any Facebook form being submitted. So we could hypothetically demo every form, any form, and it would work. But the reason it wouldn't work is because none of the other forms are mapped. So it has to be mapped. And then once it's mapped, you have to test that, you know, correct mapped form, right? And then from there, 
The only other thing to consider here is when you add the trigger, the way that this system works is you've created a trigger in the other workflow and then the lead gets added to this workflow. So if you see how this system works, we're just updating fields. And so when you change this field, right, you may see a custom value there if you purchase this from me, but you can write whatever message you want. So I can say, hey, saw that you just filled out our demo Facebook ad. Are you looking to buy or sell, right? Whatever your, if you've been working with Go High Level, really what you would do and what we do is we've just changed this, um, you know, message right here from the pre-programmed first message that we would send via SMS, right? When before all this stuff existed, you know, we would get a Facebook uh, lead, right? And then from there, we would send a string of automated texts and emails. And so instead of, you know, just having these pre-programmed messages, right? We wanna link all these leads to an automated responder. And so all I did was change this first message that was the exact same message that we would send when we pre-programmed it. And now I've added it here. And so now when this field gets updated, that automatically will trigger this master, you know, workflow that I have and do all these other things that we got. Now, these are, you know, this workflow is from other videos, so it doesn't quite look like this, but that's, that's still the main idea. So if we test this, right, I'm gonna use this, um, you know, this phone number because it's linked to a blank uh, snapshot here. So if I delete this contact, right, inside of this sub account, there will be no contacts and then just make sure everything is turned on. So the trigger is on, you know, we have the Facebook form here and there's no filter. So it's gonna run for any sort of uh, lead form that's submitted linked to the sub account. Then it's going to add the contact to the start bot workflow. And then once that field gets updated, that will send that message that I wrote as a text. And then the, by the end of demoing this, we're gonna see the contact um, right here in this little wait condition. So I'm gonna delete this second little branch because this was just for a demo. So there we go. So what I'm gonna do is go to this form, click preview form, and I'm gonna fill this out with um, this phone number, which is the you know testing phone number. And then I'll just do you know random address, and then I'm gonna click submit. So when I click submit, what's gonna happen is the uh, contact will show up inside of the you know this account here. So a Facebook lead form was automatically submitted, and basically we've triggered this. So we're gonna see a one here um, because we triggered this start bot. And now, you know, this, the contact filled out the form. They were added to the start bot workflow. Inside of the start bot workflow, we, we just basically got them, um, you know, qualified to go into that master workflow. And then now if we check on this contact, you know, it's going to be over here, like I said, right in the wait queue. Or, well, this is based on, um, you know, a demo that I had set up before. So if we just push this contact to, uh, oops, push the contact to the next step, we're gonna get that text that, that we wrote out in here. So it should be coming anytime on the uh, left side here. And it's gonna say, hey, saw that you just filled out that demo, you know, Facebook ad form or whatever I wrote. And then that basically now number one allows your leads to basically get the first message that they would have got in a pre-programmed automation that you would create. However, they're now inside of the actual bot. So if we go here, make sure I uh, sent it here. So, yeah, so it should have sent. Make sure that it came through here. Oh, it's from another number. So there it is. So saw you just filled out our demo Facebook ad. Are you looking to buy or sell? And then if I say I'm looking to buy, keep in mind the prompt isn't, um, I don't believe this prompt is curated for real estate, the one on the demo. But you can see here the lead filled out a Facebook form. And then from here, the first message was automatically sent that was relevant to the source of the actual, where the contact originated from. And then now when I respond here, I'm looking to buy, this bot will respond in just a few seconds. And the, the contact is now automatically linked to the, the system, right? And that way there's no like, okay, I gotta go change the contact, add them to the start bot workflow or whatever it is that you have to do. And like I said, the reason that I do that is because, you know, if people don't quite know how it all works and then all these sources are linked, um, there's gonna be people that are going through the bot that potentially don't need to be going through the bot. So let's see, I've noticed Go High Level this week has been a little bit slow and I potentially changed something in the workflow here. Oh, so it's, yeah, based on how I adjusted the workflow from yesterday's video, I just did a little wait step. So this isn't how I design it, but I was showing someone how to do something. So if we just basically move this contact to the next step, um, then it's gonna send the, the proper response and I can show you how it'll work when I take that out because 
I've been doing these little videos showing people how to do stuff. So now we're going to see the response or it'll take just a second probably. But while that's going on, I can just delete this action here. Like I said, you won't have to do this, but now when we get the next response, there it is. So that's great. Are you currently seeking IT solutions for your organization, right? So I can say, um, yes, I am. And now we can see here the bot will respond immediately or a lot quicker because like I said, I had this await condition up there so I could show someone how they could review the response from the bot before it was sent out. So there it is. So just to fully show you, because I did have that workflow pre-built, um, let's delete this again and let's um, test it straight. That way you can see how it works just without that other thing. So, so if you're testing this with Facebook lead forms specifically, you need to delete your lead um, every time that you, you know, link a form. So see how I have to delete that lead that corresponds with the form? Because when you're testing it, you can't have uh, multiple lead data. So I'm gonna preview the form again, and then I'm gonna paste this over here, you know, do whatever, next. And so when I submit this, right, there's no contact here, no contact here, and then I can even delete this conversation thread, that way it looks fresh. So when I submit this form over here, we're gonna see a contact here, and then we're gonna see that message get sent to the contact that says, hey, you just filled out our Facebook form. And then when I respond as the contact, immediately the bot is hooked up, right? I just had a little wait condition from a previous example. So if I click submit, boom. Now when we refresh, we will see this test contact here. And this is the, the sub account that has the, um, you know, the, the GPT system inside of it. And then if we go here, there's the message automatically sent and then all the proper tags and all that. That's why I, I isolate it because you know, this system works for other, you know, sources, IG, Facebook Messenger, and then all the sources are here. So now if I say, um, I'm looking, oops, looking to buy. And then, like I said, this prompt that's linked to this specific sub account is not for real estate, but just cater this first question to, you know, the, the prompt or the niche, obviously that you're in or helping. And then now with just a few seconds, the bot will, you know, respond here. And like I said, it's not going to require somebody to manually you know, go into the system and then basically, you know, make sure that the messages get sent. So um, let's see when it comes through here. Yeah, like I said, I have noticed high level has been a little slow. Plus GPT-4 does take a little bit longer um, compared to, let me make sure I didn't have another sort of thing linked up here in the demo. So make sure this thing's on. So that that actually was the issue. So since I tested, um, I think since I tested that um, workflow with the same contact twice, I don't know if that, what happened here, let's see. So webhook 24, make sure, well, and I think this stuff's cool to show you guys when, you know, how I look at this stuff if I'm like not getting a response because on YouTube it's easy to like, you know, just, like, oh, okay, this is perfectly how it goes all the time. But I figure I might as well show you, like, I'm not getting a message back from the bot, right? So how would I actually go about, like, diagnosing what's going on? So the first thing I'm doing right here is I'm, um, I'm verifying that the response was received from the lead within uh, Zaps. And if we go to data out, we should see the response from, from um, you know, chat GPT. And then this should get pushed, right, um, to go high level. Now what potentially happened is let's see here. So if we go to the, I should be right in here. So what potentially happened is this response, we can test this here. So if this response was the same as the previous uh, response from chat GPT, it won't send. So we can test that by Yeah, so that's the problem. You see that? So that's great. Quinn, are you currently seeking it? You see how this if we go to uh, I'll paste it so you can see what I'm saying. Cause this is the stuff that I do and that's what I bring to you guys when I do these videos. So let's close out all this. So no one's confused here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what happened when I tested this, right, is we didn't, I was showing you, Hey, when you link the form to, you know, this trigger and then you send the, the automation through, right? Like the, the, the bot should automatically respond to this and then it, it didn't. Right. So this happens to you guys setting this up or whatever. And then, you know, people don't know what to do. So I want to show you how, I'm fixing this because this is just how things, you know, not everything runs perfectly. So what happened here is if we look at the, the responses from ChatGPT, these are the exact same. You see that? And so what happened was when I demonstrated this on the first contact, right, it sent 
the message. I had that workflow thing that was pre-built, but it sent that message, right? And so now I responded, but it didn't like it didn't respond back to me. The zap worked, the workflow worked, everything worked, but there, the lead is not here. Now, why did this happen? Because when we send a response, right, from ChatGPT, it's triggered when a contact uh, custom field has changed, right? And it didn't change because this was the same exact um, response. Now, there's two ways you could fix this. Number one is when the contact gets uh, changed here, right, we can do something here. So this is kind of just, watch, I'll show you how this thing works. So if we look in this folder, we're gonna see this exact message under the GPT assistant response message. So if I change this, if I say, um, are you looking for IT solutions? If I save this, it's gonna send a message. Watch, boom. And now if I respond, yes I am, the bot will work normally, right? And that's because when GPT generated this response, it was the exact same. And so what you'll need to do is one, you can adjust your prompt to make sure you're never sending the, the same message twice. That way, if for whatever reason you're testing something or whatever, see now everything's working, um, that, that this uh, workflow condition doesn't get jammed, right? Oops, the master workflow. Cause this got jammed and now the leads right there, right? It didn't go pass through here cause the, the value hadn't changed. Now, um, that's one thing you can do to, to uh, adjust the prompt, right? And then potentially, um, I'd have to think about exactly how you could almost clear this value so that it wouldn't happen again. I don't wanna say it on video now because then people may go do it and then it's like, doesn't work. So the only thing I could say right now is just to pay attention to that. And like I said, all I did was I looked at the data, right? That chat GPT generated in terms of its response. And then, you know, once I saw that was the exact same as the previous one, I then knew that inside of here, this thing didn't get triggered because it didn't actually change, right? And because it didn't change, it didn't go down here and then send the text. So anytime that you technically um, change this value inside of the, the GPT master, um, you know, as long as the, the lead has the proper tags, I could basically tell ChatGPT the entire thread of the conversation by messaging the lead through this little custom field. I know it's inconvenient, but if you hypothetically wanted to store all that data, I can message you from here. And then when I save that, that's gonna push out the next response here in just a second. And when, or actually that won't happen because the contact is stuck in the uh, workflow. But basically when that thing does change and, and the contact has already responded, um, you can message from here. So if I clear the actual contact, from this workflow, right? Cause it's waiting for the reply. So if we uh, remove the contact from here and I go back to the contact and then I change this value, then when I save it, it's gonna push through a message. So there you go. So that was just how to add the actual contact to the Facebook lead form trigger, right? So when a Facebook lead form gets submitted, but I also wanted to show you and keep, you, you guys know me, I'm very candid and open. Like I'm not here to act like I'm, I'm perfect and you know, I just have it all figured out. And part of that is showing how to troubleshoot and understand the system because you know, that's ultimately you know, where, where your value is gonna be if you know how things work and you can troubleshoot it and fix it. So um, hope that helps and I'll see you in the next video.